someone in the police, I believe, has risked my life and my family's lives. Simon's taking a huge gamble in telling his story. You don't know whether you're going to turn a corner and uh, get a handshake or a bullet, and I don't like that. Tonight, a unique insight into the frightening world of Melbourne's gangland killings and police corruption. Simon Illingworth is a young detective sergeant who's spent the last four years working for Police Internal Affairs in Victoria, weeding out crooked police. He's been commended for his work and brought successful prosecutions against corrupt officers. But Simon Illingworth says he's been isolated, threatened and bashed, not by crooks but by other policemen. Now, at the end of his tether, he's risking everything to tell his inside story. Simon seems to be on a journey to nowhere in a way at the moment because I think he doesn't quite know what the future holds for him. The city brings back memories. It does bring back a lot of the bad memories. A suspended police officer is alleged to have provided a gun which was later used in one of Melbourne's underworld murders. You turn on the radio, you can't get away from it. You know, there's corruption. Those sorts of things just continually bring back, you know, what you're about. For completely unselfish reasons, Simon put his life at risk. He didn't know that, that it would be as severe as it was. But he didn't do it for himself. Yet his entire life has been completely changed as a result of it. I do look back and wonder if I had my time again whether or not I would have just taken off, gone interstate and worked interstate. But I, I love Victoria Police. I like surfing here. I love this place. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to, to go somewhere else. Um, it's not in my nature to flee something, to leave it unfinished. And so I won't. When Simon first started in the police force, Victoria was thought to be the best police force in the whole of Australia. Absolutely no corruption at all. I was 19. I'd come straight out of the surf, into the academy. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty naive, I suppose. You know, it was something that was worthwhile. I mean, it sounds corny, but when you get interviewed for a police career, you say, I want to help the community. And, um, and I still believe that. We were really thrilled. Um, we were very proud. We thought it'd be just the thing for Simon. Never could really march that well, I've got to say. <laughs> I could be an investigator and, and a detective. And I thought that this was an opportunity for me to live something that was exciting. There's an element of danger, everyone knows that, but it was just something that, that gripped me. And that's why I thought, this is for me. Up to the first two years, it was everything that I wanted. You know, there was mateship. I was playing in the, in the police football team. I had got information that led to the arrest of, of one of the top ten, which was just unheard of. I saved two young kids out of a burning building. It was a dream come true. Everything was was great. It was a, it was it's, it was the job that everyone should do. Two years in, and um, and I ran into uh, corruption. Like as I would need the uh, new sergeant. Early in Simon's career, he was roster on duty with a sergeant who'd been newly promoted from the armed robbery squad, who uh, came to the station with a uh, high profile. Constable Illingworth, nice to meet you. We thought this guy's a legend. He was what I, I wanted to be. Uh, I wanted to become, you know, a, a gun detective. He asked me to take him around where the card games and the gambling took place. Okay, gentlemen, let's see all your hands on the table. We went in there and I started writing everyone's name down and told them to leave the money on the table. All of a sudden the till's ringing behind me and there's money being stuffed into a pocket. 
And I didn't want to look back because I knew who it was. And I didn't say anything. Is it, is that everything? The money okay. on the table went into his pocket as well. I was compromised. I didn't even get a choice in it. And I thought, well, what's going to happen now? Is he he's going to offer me half? I mean, thankfully, not only was he a thief, but he was greedy as well. And he didn't offer me half. We drove off, we went to the armed robbery squad, and he asked me to grab a bag of the lockers. And the bag was really heavy. And I knew, I didn't even have to look in it. I knew there were guns in it. Nothing is that heavy. I didn't know what to do. And then he picks his own night shift crew, as they do, you know, you pick the people you can trust, no doubt. And of course, who can he trust that you can trust me? Because I was willing to just, you know, passively take part in it, I guess. Which isn't me. Because I've always had the strength of character, but but I was becoming someone that I wasn't. We ended up on this night shift and he hatched a plan to kidnap a criminal. He talked about having put a boiler suit and a balaclava on. He spoke about a quarry, taking him to a quarry and then I asked him what he was going to do and he made this, you know, boom. And this was going to be an execution. He rang me up and said, Mum, I've got to disappear for two days. And I had no idea what was going on and I was worried. And I said, Simon, what on earth's the matter? He said, I can't explain now. And that was the end of the conversation. Everything was going through my head. Do I get out of the police force and just pretend that this plan had just never happened? Or do I stick true to what I said when I was getting into the police force? But what happened then? I went to Internal Affairs and, uh, and, and I made a statement. Whistleblower is a tag. It's like mobster, gangster. It's like having a tattoo on your forehead. All the criminals that you've locked up, all the times where you've put your life on the line for someone, that becomes incidental because you're a dog. I had to go to court for the committal hearing and I walked to court. because I guess the situation was is that no one wanted to drive me there. And I walked up and stood there whilst all the other police detectives from the squads or places where he'd worked stared at me like I was some sort of a freak. And then one of the police took it to another level and pointed at his forehead and went boom in my face. 